Last time we looked at how noise can be a real problem for some types of trading strategy, yet of benefit to others. But of course, to put this concept into practical use, we need to be able to measure noise in a quantifiable way. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. As traders, we need to take action and put noise analysis into use. So for example, maybe avoiding trend following systems when noise is too high and vice versa for mean reverting systems. But to do this, we have to be able to measure noise in a quantifiable way. In this series, we'll look at two methods for doing this. And the first of those, a technique known as price density, is what we'll concentrate on today. Let's make a start. Here's a quick reminder of the two scenarios that we've looked at so far. The first following a trend following strategy and the second a mean reversion strategy. And we saw how noise can cause whipsaws, meaning small losing trades, and also how it reduces the profit on your profitable trades. But then when we looked at mean reversion, we saw how this actually presents opportunities to get out of your trade at a profit or certainly at less of a loss than in non-noisy environments. And this happens predominantly when the price action moves into more of a momentum mode and the meaningful price action starts to move against your position. And so we can say that generally, noise is the friend of mean reversion strategies whereas it's the foe of trend following. So if we are able to measure noise, this means we can take two potential approaches. Firstly, it means we can set rules so that we only trade particular systems when the noise is at the appropriate level that's advantageous to those. So for example, if noise is high, then we would want to avoid trend following strategies and vice versa when the noise is low. But another way is to match assets to strategies. So some assets will be naturally more noisy than others. And therefore we might have a principle where we only trade those noisy assets with our mean reversion strategies and the more quiet assets with trend following. But as we've said, in order to do this, we need to measure the noise. And in this series, I'm going to cover two techniques. The first of those is called price density, and the second is the efficiency ratio. And in this episode, I'm going to concentrate on price density. Now, to understand this, it helps to think of the price action being confined to a box. And with relatively low noise, the price action might look like this. Whereas when this asset is particularly noisy, it might look something more like this. Now notice that the net price move, so where the price starts and where the price ends, is identical in both of these scenarios. The only difference is that when we experience high levels of noise, the price action fills the box more effectively than when we have low noise. And it's using that principle by which we measure the noise using price density. The actual calculation looks like this. So let's start to unpack this and see what it really means against some actual price action. So the numerator on top here looks at the high of each of the bars and the low of a bar, calculates the difference, and then sums up all of those values. So from the first bar, like you see here, the second bar, third bar, and so on, all the way to the final bar, within the period of time that we're looking at. So this gives us an idea of the fluctuation of the individual price moves. Next, if we look at the denominator, this just simply uses the maximum value from all of the highs of those bars, subtracts the minimum low out of all of the bars, and so this gives us the range or the height of the box. And so if there's a lot of price fluctuation compared to the actual range, this means we'll have a high value, which gives the indication that we have high levels of noise. 
If, however, those individual fluctuations are small compared to the range, this means we'll get a low value for the price density and therefore have low levels of noise. And so now we have a way of quantifiably measuring this that we can backtest to see how this affects our strategies. And the nice thing about this is that it's a relative value, which means it can be used across any time frame and any asset to give us a comparable figure to compare those noise levels. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to move on to the efficiency ratio and look at how that measures noise. And if that episode is already available, then you'll see it top right now. Please do remember to give me a thumbs up, but now until next time, trade wise, trade safe.